please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Trading Hours. The market is up about 20 odd points or so. Uh, the 10,398 odd is where the index is at. The mid cap index is absolutely flat. The Bank Nifty is up 16 or 17 odd points. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, even if the market wanted to go down, as they say, they don't go down or up in straight lines. There has to be a bit of a bounce, a halt, a pause. Uh, and uh, the fact is, the uh, I dare say the news about the, uh, the the PNB hole in terms of the fraud which has been which has happened uh, maybe is uh, you know it's at least a week old so the news is out there uh, the fear of course has been spreading each of the days since the first day that the, this came out that this may, maybe uh, it may lead us down a rabbit hole which might be a lot deeper than one what, what one imagined in uh, to some extent it has been proven right uh, but the fact is uh, that uh, everyone knows. Uh, broadly what has happened here and uh, of course I mean investigations and more revelations etc are part of the game but for now uh, I think uh, the news is in uh, if I may say so so the nifty uh, up 24 points will we get a bit of a uh, bounce more remember from yesterday's lows the nifty the bank nifty and pretty much everything else bounced quite a bit uh, so let's see if we are able to hold and maybe sustain some more of this bounce. But uh, globally also, you don't have very much to go on. Overnight, Wall Street was shut. So it's pretty quiet out there. With me is my colleague, Ekta Batra. Ekta, morning. Hi, Prashant. Well, uh, it continues to be stocks in focus. So while the Nifty is consolidating at this point in time, maybe a little bit with a positive bias, we in fact are up around 100 odd points for the Sensex with a positive advance decline ratio, which is currently standing at around close to 2 is to 1. We have stocks which continue to be in focus. So for example, Prashant mentioned PNB, but we have other stocks such as Gitanjali Gems, which is down in another circuit today. No surprises coming in there. But other stocks include something like a Fortis, which is is down around three to four odd percent relegate which is declined as well and something like Tata Steel which is bouncing back post a positive brokerage note that came through but uh, separately do watch out for what's happening with Aurobindo from the nifty space as well uh, it's the top loser on the nifty at this point it's down around one odd percent there is that unit for inspection we understand from sources which is currently going on so there is some amount of trepidation ahead of that considering it is one of their more important injectables unit so this is not confirmed by the management but nonetheless that is some source based information at this point but um, it is expiry week so let's get in some FNO strategies first we have Shubham Agarwal the CEO of QAPP securities joining in uh, Shubham hi over to you then what are you recommending to your clients yeah hi Ikta. good morning uh, so a couple of strategies the first one would be on ICC bank where we are recommending a bull call spread and this uh, is for the next month. Uh, so given the fact that uh, uh, most of the private banking stocks has seen a relative outperformance, we believe that you know there is a pullback that is due in the private banking space and ICC Bank could be one of the leader in that. Uh, so the strategy would be to buy one lot of 340 call option for the March expiry and to sell one lot of 370 call option. Overall strategy level PNL would be 20,000 rupees profit and a 9,000 rupees stop loss is what we need to maintain for the strategy. The second strategy would be uh, for the current expiry on Bank Nifty, where we are recommending a long call. Uh, 25,200 strike call can be bought. The target would be 200, and the stop loss for the same would be 55. And the last strategy is a uh, modified put butterfly on Nifty, uh, because 10,500 is a point where we have seen the maximum call in the put OI to be, and that remains the most optimal point for this expiry. So keeping that into consideration, 10,500 uh, put can be sold to lot for the current expiry and we should buy protection for uh, 10,450 put and 10,750 put. Overall, uh, expectation on the profit side would be 4,600 rupees and the loss would start above 10,600, uh, which is at 2,900 rupees. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Shubham. Appreciate you joining us uh, with that. Uh, you know, there are some flashes at the bottom, of the, not flashes, but uh, ticker, uh, the stock values there. JSPL, I think, came up. JSPL has lost about 2%, 5 rupees or so from the day's high. I mean, DLF uh, also has come off 225. It's off, I mean, barely uh, a percent or so from the highs. Uh, but, you know, but uh, there is other stuff. I mean, I think Tata Steel 
had gotten to about 661. It's dropped about 10 rupees from that level. So there is, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, pressure which is which seems to be building on, uh, but nothing like what what we've seen now for the last couple of days. Uh, or so. I mean, look at something like an interglobe aviation. 1290 was the high. It's about 1269. Uh, so just a bunch of names from across where there is a bit of pressure which is coming off. Metals, I think, for the last so many trading sessions now, uh, it's seen a marked shift. I mean, metals in the initial part of the fall of the market were uh, holding on absolutely nicely, uh, but uh, they've started correcting. Nothing very large, steel or non-steel, depend. I mean, given the rally that they've had, uh, but they're not performing on uh, even, you know, uh, days when we have a bit of a bounce. Uh, so that's something to be said about metals. I think we've got Sudarshan Sukhani of S2 Analytics with us now on uh, with some trades. Sudarshan, morning. Thanks very much. What would you make of how the Nifty is sitting right now and uh, prospects today? Yeah, good morning again. See, the Nifty is having a minor relief rally in an ongoing downtrend. So uh, our view is to go and build short positions once the Nifty, if the Nifty reaches somewhere around 450, 10,450 or whereabouts, uh, there is no buying opportunity. The market's uh, decline is likely to continue and reach a level of 10,000, give or take a few points. So the put positions, which means buying puts to take a short position, a bearish position is what we are suggesting. Uh, day trades are different matter. In the, during the day, there are stocks that have the prospects of going up also. For today, we have Bharat Forge, where uh, a small rally can continue till the afternoon or in evening, and Godrej Consumer again, which is a buying opportunity. So Bharat Forge and Godrej Consumer are both buys in a uh, choppy market of the kind we are seeing today. And there's a short sell, which is Muthut Finance. Uh, it's not just Muthut Finance. All NBFCs are... Uh, literally in a bear market so most of them can be sold short today for this show and for the afternoon we have Muthut finance as a selection that's all okay all right those are your stocks uh, Sudarshan I wanted to quiz you on what your sense is on the mid cap index as a whole it seems to be precarious right now um, we're probably going to see that crisscross take place on the advanced decline ratio soon enough so what's your sense in terms of how the mid caps could pan out today my own sense is that by afternoon the mid cap should uh, start falling. So uh, the opportunities are only in, on the short sell side, not anywhere else. Okay. All right. We have a couple of Twitter queries now, Sudarshan. The first one is Sunny, 200 shares of Kadila, which is purchased at 410, wants to know what to do with it. Well, I would say he should sell it out. Kadila is in a downtrend. That trend continues. Then pharma is, uh, you know much better how pharma goes through bouts of news which we never understand. I mean, laymen like us. So the stock chart itself is saying it's going down. It's in a sector where news is primary. So I would say sell out and focus on financial services, private sector banks, IT companies. That is the area where you should be investing. Fair enough. We've got another question. Rajat Rajdev has 100 shares of IOC, Indian Oil Corporation, bought at 413 rupees. He can hold for six months and wants your view on the stock. IOC, Sudarshan. Well, Prashant, IOC is a much better opportunity to hold on to. So my suggestion is hold on. I, can't, I see six months is too short a time frame, but in a year's time, I think you should be a winner in IOC. So stay with it. It's a blue chip. The charts are very attractive. Stay with it. Hold on the commodity space now we have Manisha Gupta joining in to tell us uh, what's happening on that front uh, well Manisha over to you now Ikta thank you so much for that well uh, you know the most important thing that the Indian commodity markets would be watching out today is that the PM is deciding over the agriculture uh, uh, meeting that is happening in Delhi today and he's expected to uh, he already has put out a seven-point agenda but the deliberations discussions on what really is coming out of that is something that he would be looking at and that would happen in the second half of that today a couple of things important here of course is one there is of course a seven-point agenda which I'm which I will just tell you the other thing of course has been that the government has been trying to tackle the 
funding uh, the availability of uh, that for the seven point agenda as well to double the farmers income going forward in next four to five years well the policies are expected to be income centric rather than production centric is something that we already have seen the food minister talk about but the agenda itself seems to be quite comprehensive it is starting with the irrigation part of it remember the pm has been talking about more crop per drop year the second most important thing is the provision of quality seeds and nutrients as per the soil quality <laughs> there also is conversation on implementation investments in case of warehouses and cold chain storages etc pre harvest and poor harvest that facility is something that the farmers of course have been lacking apart from that the value addition food processing etc is something that the government has been putting a lot of pressure on so there is going to be a comprehensive uh, preparing of how it needs to be pushed on in the next few years that is what we are expecting today technology is yet another important part so implementation of enam to connect all the 585 mandis across india is yet another important point and then of course the mitigation of risk introduction of crop insurance etc is something that the pm himself has announced couple of years back we have heard it through every budget as well so there are going to be a detailed scheme at a lower cost that is going to be talked about in the day to day as well and then of course apart from farm and agriculture the allied industry and activities such as dairy animal husbandry hortic culture poultry farm and fisheries etc is something that the government has been putting a lot of emphasis on so we are expecting all of that all of those details to come in today in the evening kunal shah of nirmal bank then joins us to talk more about that kunal hi while of course the global markets are doing what they are doing but the indian markets are quite keenly watching out for all the details that would come out from this meeting post the pm has spoken what is your sense what are most priority of uh, the, the, the you know of the details or the agenda out of the seven points that the pm has himself put out yes i think uh, the interesting uh, point from the commodity future point of view is uh, the integration of spot in futures and uh, the spot market so i think the uh, uh, future participants are watching how uh, the development of the spot market is going to play a major role like you rightly pointed out enam uh, i think uh, uh, this is one of those point if this happens i think the volumes in the agriculture future market will increase uh, exponentially over coming years so i will keenly be watching on the how the announcement on the developing of spot market uh, pans out Hmm. and kunal how much of uh, you know strength are the agri markets in themselves taking in from this because this is after a very long time that we have seen the farm income being talked about uh, and a push in all senses right from irrigation to steel to ally to technology etc pre and post harvest and crop assurance etc so how much uh, strength uh, have you gathered from the ground when it comes to agri as a commodity I think uh, there is a lot of optimism after the budget and uh, that has been translated also in the prices of lot of commodities a uh, lot of pr uh, prices of lot of commodities were depressed and uh, suddenly after the budget we've seen a uh, gradual uptick coming in most of the agriculture commodity prices so i think we are going to see a stability in the sector and we are going to see a stability from the price point of view also farmers are likely to get a better price going forward and uh, i think the vision what the prime minister has uh, is likely to materialize in in years to come and the farm income is definitely going to shoot up hmm. A any trade that you are picking up right now because we saw the pulses prices run up the edible oil prices have been doing quite well as well any trade that you are picking up in the agri space today i think pulses uh, looks very attractive especially the one which is trading on ncdx is chana and uh, we believe that the worst is over for this commodity uh, the bumper production the uh, higher carry forward stock all this is factored in the prices price are already trading at uh, almost uh, all time lows of in last 2 years 3 years low from here i think one should build a position and one should see a uptake of at least 10 to 15% in next quarter all right uh, thanks very much uh, both of you for coming in with that uh, perspective on commodities agri commodities in particular i mean take a look at what's happening on the market which is absolutely completely sold off we are now actually in the red when we started we had a 25 point gain on the nifty we got two point cut now uh, and it's showing up across the board uh pnb is now down, down almost 4.5% i just want to quickly take a look at what's happening on sectoral indices so real estate index is the top loser by the way it's down about 1 and a quarter if you can have that up please the psu bank index is down almost a full 1% uh yesterday at one point the psu bank index was down 5% uh it recovered uh, sharply by close almost 50% of that was recovered by close but it's down 1% again today pharmaceutical index is down half a percent i mean i think uh, it'd be easier to count the 
uh, winners. I think IT index is still holding up in the green. Metals are up a third of a percent. But I'm looking at, I mean, you know, put up some, pull up something like Tata Steel, uh, which got hammered yesterday, about 6% or so. It recovered about 1.5%, but now it's basically absolutely uh, flat. There's barely anything left on it from yesterday's close, uh, three, or, three odd rupees or so. So it's a market which seems to be, uh, which seems to have corrected quite a bit. 10, 3, 7, 8, uh, flipping back and forth between green and red. We slip into a very quick break. We come back and we uh, discuss market technicals as always with Ashwini Gujral.